Hey friends, so glad that you're with me on the podcast today. I've got a brand new friend with me who uh, is really inspiring my work in what I'm doing with artists. And I was, it, I was just like, oh my gosh, I got to have Pamela Wilson on the podcast. So Pamela, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. We were, I was just saying before we came on, you know, these kind of connections that you make through a friend of a friend, or you need to meet this person or that person, which is kind of how I found out about you and your incredible work uh, with helping folks not only create content, but actually do great things with their content once they have it. For those folks that may not know you and are just getting to know you, why don't you give everybody just a thumbnail sketch of who you are and what you do creatively? I came to content marketing actually as somebody who considered myself not a writer. I have a design background. I had a design studio for decades. And when it came to the point that I wanted to bring my expertise online, I knew I wanted to use content marketing, which involves writing. I mean, it usually, even when you end up on video like this, you start with some kind of written outline. And sure. so the ability to sort of translate your ideas into words was just something I hadn't done very much of. So I knew I needed to learn it. And one of the things that I noticed is that as a designer, and I think any kind of visual artist has this ability, yeah. you can notice patterns. And so I saw this pattern of how great pieces of content were put together. And once I recognized the elements, I was able to kind of reproduce them. And I discovered that actually I could write really good, <laughs> useful content. So once I figured this out, I started turning around and teaching it to other people to help to give them confidence and help them feel kind of empowered around content marketing. And that's what led to the books. I just love that because, you know, as somebody that is not only an artist and writing my own copy and, and content for what we do with, with our mentoring program and all that, but also helping other artists get started in that, I know that it's a, it's a major point of overwhelm, not just the technology end of it, but then the, what do I say? How do I, you know, get my thoughts out there? How do I build that connection that I need to as not only an artist, but an entrepreneur to, to make the connections in the marketplace that are going to result in sales? So for somebody that's, you know, just starting out, so many of our listeners, Pamela, are brand new artists or they're artists that are coming back to their creativity. They're trying to launch out there with a website on social media and that sort of thing. What's one of the things that you, you know, or a few things that you say that, you know, to help folks get started and, and begin to have that pathway? I think the most important thing that you can do is to find some kind of a unique voice that you can use when you are talking about your work and talking mm. about your content. Um, anyone who's had any kind of a corporate background or an academic background, you basically have to try to put those things on a shelf and find a voice that's really unique to you. Mm. And I think as an artist, especially those of us who want to interact with your work, we want to know more about you and the person who's behind that work. So finding a, I call it a, a UCV. So it's your unique content voice. Oh, that's good. And figuring out what that is. Um, I actually have a course about content marketing. So one of the early exercises in the course is I, I ask people to think back to when we were all in high school. And do you remember when we were all in high school and they would have the end of year book, the yearbook, basically, that would Absolutely. review the whole year, right? And so, and you would choose people from your class and give them some kind of superlative. So class clown or, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, most likely to succeed or best leader or, you know, funniest, all these things. So one of the exercises I ask people to do in my course is to think back and think if somebody was to assign a superlative to you, what would it be? Or, or a series of superlatives, what would they say? Would they say very open and friendly or would they say, um, you know, smart or, um, accessible or, you know, funny or, you know, what would they say about you? And then how can you translate those things to your content so that it comes across and expresses those aspects of who you are? Does that make sense? That's so great. Cause we, we kind of talk about, you know, that general marketing term, the unique selling proposition and that sort of thing. But I love that you're saying unique content voice, cause that really is 
such an easy way for folks to understand, hey, I, I'm communicating what's unique about me, what's unique about how I do business, my art, that sort of thing. And, and I, I, just I really, think it's easier yeah. if we think about it uh, from the angle of like, what do other people say about us rather yes. than asking you to figure out what can you say about yourself? Like, what do other people always say about you? Yeah. Gee, you're so friendly. You're so easy to talk to. You're, you're, you give great advice and I can depend on it and things like that. So if you think back to what others say about you and then figure out how you can be that person in your content, I think it can be really powerful. That's so good. Cause I, I think a lot of times people, they get, it's kind of like, you know, the deer in the headlights look like, I don't know what makes me unique. So it's easier to hear that through what other, other people. people have said, as opposed to you just coming up um, from it as well. So I love that. What else does that unique voice, what else is going to help somebody really get started? Yeah. The, so the unique voice is part of it. And then the other piece that I think can be really important is to develop some kind of a routine for actually getting your content created. So you have read my books. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I've got one here, so I'll go, and hold, hold, go ahead and hold it up so people can see it. And this book, Master Content Marketing, that book is really focused on the process of actually putting your content together. Mm. The, the, the actual like mechanical process of putting your content together. So if we were doing a painting, it would be, you know, you can construct the canvas frame and then you stretch the canvas and you put the gesso on and you, you know, you do all that prep work. Well, content has a similar process. And what I recommend is that people find a way to spread that process out over several days. Because as you know, anyone who's created anything, done any kind of creative right. work, it becomes better the more often you step away from it and then revisit it. Mm. Because every time you see it again, after you haven't seen it for a little while, you've got like fresh eyes Absolutely. and you can see what it's missing, where it needs to be cleared up or where things need to change or edits need to happen. And you can use that same thing with your content marketing, where you develop it over several days and you go back and visit it. And every time you visit it, it's like, oh, I need to clarify this section. I need to add a subhead here. I need to, you know, put in an image or something like that. So when you have a process for doing that, and it basically, the way I teach it, it's to think about the headline and the basic outline on the first day mm -hmm. and then step away and don't look at it again. And then on the second day, you try to create the first draft. So if you're doing something like a, a podcast, you might do your podcast recording on the second day. And then you step away again, you just leave it be. And then you come back to it on the third day and you do all your editing on that day. So this is really those two pieces separating right. them is the most important thing, the creation from the editing. Those really need to be separate. So you come back, you edit, you polish and get it ready to publish. And then on the fourth day, you publish it and you promote it, which is social media. You put yeah. it out on social media, tell your email list about it and things like that. That's so good. I, I don't know that I've ever thought about that, creating one day and editing the next, but I love that just from a art perspective, because I do that all the time. You work in the studio, then you're like, I can just tell as an artist, like, ah, I'm getting to that place where it's going to get ugly. So I, it's going to get step worse. Up. So I got to step I need away. To step away from this. Right. And, <laughs> right. But I love yeah. that coming back to that and editing with fresh eyes. That is that is really, really wonderful. And I have to tell you, it came directly from my design career because mm. I started my career working in a studio. So you could depend on other people's eyes to look at your work. I used to go around and say, what is this missing? I know mm. it's missing something. What is it missing? And my fellow designers, could always tell me but once I had my own studio when I was working by myself I didn't have a way to do that and I discovered very quickly if I would just leave something overnight and then come back to it the next day I could see what it was missing like I, I was looking at it the first time so That's I so started good. to do the same thing with my content and it it involves a little bit of discipline because you have to build in that time but I, you asked, this is like a very long way to answer your question. So yeah. the, the secret is really to build in time and then to have a, a process where you're kind of doing the same thing on the same day of the week. So for example, if you want to publish on Wednesday, you are working on your outline and your headline Friday of the week before. And on Monday, you're writing your first draft. 
And on Tuesday, you are doing all that polishing and editing so that you can publish on Wednesday. Right. And the beauty of that is if it's Monday, you're writing a first draft. You mm. write your first drafts every Monday. That's yeah, when you yeah. write them. And if you can just follow that schedule, you can get a fresh new piece of content created every single week. And it just feels like it's part of your routine. It's just what you do. I love that. And it's not like it takes all day to do that. You're talking, no. you know, 45 minutes, an hour, maybe to write a great piece of That's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, and, and it also eliminates that thing that you just mentioned, which is when you spend four or five hours staring at something by right. the end, you can't see it anymore. You, see it anyway, right. <laughs> you don't know what it needs. You're, you're just blind to it. So this gives you a chance to just work on it for small chunks of time, come back to it multiple times, make it better every time. And by the time you're ready to publish it, you have really given it a thorough looking at and, and, you know, lots of polish. So it's, you you're creating work that's really good quality because yeah. of that. Yeah, that's great. Now, as I was reading your second book, you know, about strategy, I really appreciated this concept that there are different phases that content goes through. You know, as you have a website, when you're just starting out, content's going to, and content creation and publication is going to be different than if you're a few years into it, or if you're like me and you've been a lot of years into it, and you've got tons and tons of content. Walk through those those three kind of stages that you talk about, because I just found that really helpful. And I know that as far as our listeners go, we have folks that are at every stage um, in their business and in that content development. So Right. So this idea came from a book that I read when I was expecting my first child. There was this book, and I think it's still popular. It's called What to Expect When You're Expecting. And my wife had that book. When we had yeah, I mean, I think all of us had that book. All yeah. of us who were ever expecting a child had that book. So, And what I loved about it is it really walked you through how things change from month to month and then how things change in the first years of your child's life. And they change pretty dramatically. So it was really good information. And what I found is that when you're putting content on a website, the needs that you have changed dramatically from year to year. So in the first year, what you really want to focus on is just getting into the habit of creating content and building up your, I call it your content chops. So it's basically your content abilities, which get better the more you practice them. So what I recommend in year one, so I call it birth through year one, and I'm taking that directly from, from yeah, that sure. book, but it's basically birth to year one of your website. You want to focus on creating content on a weekly basis if you can pull it off. And what that will do for you is at the end of a year, you'll have about 50 pieces of content and you'll be a really good content creator yeah. because you've just practiced it every week, right? Then in the next stage, I call that years two through five. So I call it your growing website. So that's where you have a lot of experience at this point as a content creator. You can maybe publish every other week instead of every week because you already have 50 pieces of content on your site. Your content skills have been developed. You have also told search engines what your site is about, which mm. is also important. You want to let the search engine, um, you know, algorithms understand what your website is about and what your content covers. So creating content is how you do that. But then years two through five, then you can focus on creating slightly longer pieces of content. Maybe you add some multimedia components like mm -hmm. video like this. Um, you add more images, things like that. And then you get to the mature website, which is like years six and up, I usually right. say. And it sounds like that's where you are. Yeah. And that's where you just have a lot of content. So as a, as a site owner, your job really turns to, yes, you're still creating some new content, but your job turns to keeping your older content updated, making sure people can easily find what they need when they come to your website. So using categories, using, you know, maybe a sidebar list, things like that, so that people can get to where they want to go. And then also things like, you know, if you have older pieces of content that aren't as strong, maybe you consolidate those under one, you know, you make one strong page and redirect mm -hmm. those posts. So there are a lot of things that you can do 
once you have a lot of content, you, I always say it's like you're a resource librarian. You, I love you that. have all this information and you have to help people find their way around it. And guys, listen, as you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a little overwhelming. And I was just, as I was reading this second book that Pamela's got on strategy, I was that's like, it, that one? yeah, hold it up. Cause it's a great, <laughs> great book. And I was like, dang, I'm not doing this. We're not, we're not doing this. And as I literally, as I'm reading it, I'm firing off emails to our team. Like we should be doing this. We should be doing that. But I made one change just to, as a testimony to what you're saying. So we've got all this content on our blog and we were not using um, our, our um, categories, you know, ability and our uh, SEO titles and SEO descriptions and that sort of thing in our, when we posted a blog, we were just popping it up there, letting everybody know about it in our podcast. And there you go. I, I made that change uh, about a week ago, just a week. And um, with five main categories on our home page now on the sidebar, uh, we're starting to add the SEO things, you know, to the blog. We're already seeing, I mean, tons more comments of people finding the blog and people even saying, oh, I didn't even know you had a blog. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> so this, again, wherever you are in process, no shame, you know, just start now. As Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you do better. You know? Exactly. So, yeah, yes, right? exactly. And, I, you know, if you are at the beginning of the process, um, you know, I don't want to make this a big pitch for the books, but it, it does make sense to to just understand what the process looks like so yeah. that you can start strong yeah. and and not be sort of retroactively fixing things after you've got hundreds of blog posts. Right. It's easier if you can sort of get it right from the very beginning. That's right. That's right. Well, Pamela, I know folks are going to want to grab your books, definitely other resources that you've got figure out, you know, find out about your courses and all that. So where's the best place that they can kind of continue the journey with you and get started on this road to, to content marketing? Mm. So they can find either of the books they can find. Let's see if they go to mastercontentmarketing.com. <laughs> they can find that book and they can go to mastercontentstrategy.com to find that one. And my main site is bigbrandsystem.com. Awesome. So, and I've got 10 years of content. So I am definitely in that resource librarian phase. Absolutely. I've got a lot of content on the site and I would love to see people there. Absolutely. Well, guys, as you're listening and watching, uh, I always try to bring you the best of the best. And honestly, as I'm looking at Pamela's resources, they are phenomenal. The testimonials that she has on our website from just industry leaders from all over the place are just like, Pamela is the best. And I, I just have to agree, Pamela. I know I'm just getting to know you, but you are just putting out some great, great stuff. And I know our listeners and, and, uh, and viewers are going to love it. So Pamela Wilson, thank you for being on the podcast today. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. My pleasure.